where it has this and this and selection comes out. Okay. Are you able to see my a whole screen or just one slide? The presenter mode. We're seeing presenter mode. Beautiful. All right. Hello and welcome. Oh, what is this? No, no, no. We're seeing presenter mode. So we're seeing like all of the notes and the next oh. steps coming up. What is that? That wasn't my plan. Ah, here we go. All right, cool. How's that? Much better. Very cool. So let's talk about sustainable performing organizations. But first, oops. Oh my goodness. All right. Hello, I'm Leanna Torgerson. And everybody's curious, what is the sports psychology gig going on? So I uh, started, I started in individual and team sports. I had no idea what I want to do with myself. I went to college, back to back to back to back. Still had no idea what I want to do, yet I was crazy enough to say, let me go and do master's. So I did master's in sports psychology while I did undergrad in psychology. So my whole path is psychology, very, very heavy driven. Sports psychology is the training of the mind. How do you perform under different conditions at a sustainable, consistent pace? It's not about how can you hit it only once, but it's about how do you hit it consistently? So I leveraged my athletic experience with team and individual sports. And I happen to be at the right place at the right time where somebody said, we need a scrum master. And they're like, hey, there's Leona. All right, cool. And then I learned about Agile and I was like, holy shit, is this for real? Like I can leverage it almost that for that and like totally enjoy doing what I do. So I played a lot of sports, but right now I'm down to winter sports and hiking outdoors. So skiing. Snowshoeing is the thing, but I did soccer, martial arts, and ice hockey. Those were like the dominant sports. I did my master's on aggression in ice hockey. And let me tell you, aggression is a good thing, but when it's used in a negative way, then it's not so good. So you can take the good or you can put it to, right? All depends how you leverage. So what am I doing now? I am a student I'm learning how to be a researcher. I'm doing a doctorate in interdisciplinary leadership which led me to put together what I'm gonna present for you guys today, okay? So here I am, hello, and thanks for being here, very grateful. Anyone has any questions about sports psych or anything before we deep dive? All right, so I wanna put it out there. This is a safe zone. We're gonna talk about things. It might trigger a question, it might trigger a thought. It's okay to change your mind. It's not set in stone. It is a journey. And some ideas are worth sleeping on because they grow and evolve further. Okay. Are we all okay with the safe zone? No judgment? Yep. All good. Awesome. So here's my first question. And we're going to go into breakout rooms. So we're going to have a little time to dialect and noodle on this. What does it mean to be a performing organization? A performing organization means what? So think of it as an organization. It doesn't matter what size it is. You can pick a small org, you can pick an enterprise, or you can pick a somewhere in the middle, okay? It does not matter. But if you were to come in and you were to say, a performing organization is blah, 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 blah. What are those blah, 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 blahs? Any questions? So you expect us to come back with some summary paragraph of some sort? What you put in is what you get out that is up to you and only you. But it would be nice if you came back with something. So you can write it down anywhere you want. If you write it in the chat, remember it goes away. It does not transfer, I don't think. Maybe it does at this point. Don't remember. So capture it to where you want to keep it. Okay, but the whole point is try to describe what a what is a performing organization. Okay. Awesome. I put it. I put the prompt into the chat, and uh, Lena, you will end up in a breakout room. And that's right. Pick and choose whether you want to jump out, and I'll be roaming around a little. All, All right. right. Sounds good. How much Seven time? Do we minutes. Have? Seven minutes. Really. 
uh, we came up with, um, because as an organization, you have a mission statement or a goal, um, we talked a lot about, uh, you know, safety and sustainability of the, and understanding your processes and um, constantly having a, a learning environment um, to understand um, how to meet your goal or your mission, um, rather than uh, focusing on, you know, just producing, producing, producing. Mm -hmm. Is that on something you're experiencing now, or is that something that's how it should be and thriving towards? <laughs> I, I've experienced it in the past. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Muzzle for you. Very cool. Yeah. Um, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that. Anybody else? Um, we talked a little bit about how um, a performing organization would have a, like a quantifiable strategic outcomes. Um, they would have alignment, reduced confusion. Um, let's see, what else did we say, Alina? Um, we were talking that the um, such organization would uh, have also a product that is extremely good and valuable to many people and organ such organization would be profitable otherwise you can be like very optimal and um is the good teamwork but uh if you're not if you're not profitable you're not really performing mm -hmm. well you the have dollar works better yeah we were talking about how you have to you could be really, really good at building something that is not valuable to any customers, right? So it has to be something that um, meets customer needs. Mm -hmm. Can we have high performing startups? Yeah, but they're the not profitable. Need, <laughs> no, they're not, but they're building something that meets customer needs. So profitability obviously is the end goal. You don't need yeah. to be profitable day one. Okay. So we have sustainability opportunity to learn, you bring value to the customer, you're able to go with the mission and have those goals chip against it. Transparency, mm -hmm. strategic alignment. Mm -hmm. Nice. There's the whole governance structures, like roles, responsibilities, who decides what. Uh, who's part of the decision? Everybody. I mean, everybody's important. <laughs> For every decision. That's that sounds nightmarish. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different story. But you got to bring everybody to the party, all right? Okay. <clears throat> At least by representation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as we talked about performing organization. Let's switch. Let's go forward to what does it mean to be a performing team? A performing team means what? Okay. So similar, but different. Okay. Any questions on the next breakout? We're gonna take it a little bit deeper, boots on the ground. All right, for a team. Cool, we are ready to go. And because some people left, the breakouts will be just a little different, some of them anyway. All right, no worries, let's do it. Performing team, what do you think? What's a performing team? Well, I was I was left alone to mend the room, so I sat with myself, and for me it was pretty easy. I was thinking, well, as long as the team has the skill and the trust and the good communication and some, you know, agitator leader. To me, that leader. to me that would be a performing team. 
That's what I thought. I'll Thanks for sharing that. So that it's similar to an organization. I mean, the same elements apply that we talked about earlier, the outcomes, the working smoothly together, sustainability. But in addition, the goals are more granular. The team is obviously smaller. And to work well together, they have to have more fungible skills so people can step in and really help each other to achieve the goals, which you would not expect in a larger organization, say between a finance organization and developers. Mm -hmm. More granular, we but still connected. Go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, yeah, we covered a lot of those things, as, um, you know, as, as well as having, again, a learning culture. But also, um, she was, when she was talking about uh, some of the stuff, her experience, um, having uh, an agile organization. Because if you have agile teams without the organization being agile, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> sometimes you're at loggerheads with each other. <laughs> Sometimes doing gets in the way of being. Or planning gets in the way of doing. <laughs> Krista. Yeah. So would we want the same meaning of a performing organization and a performing team? To me, it feels like just a difference of scale. Uh-huh. Yeah. You gotta have trust no matter what level. You gotta have safety no matter where you are. You could be the lowest of the org or you could be the highest, but the pressure is different. And without you know, safety. We, Go ahead. Yeah, when we were talking about teams, we we ended up talking more about being honest and empathetic with one another, being authentic with one another, respecting one another, um, being accountable to one another. But you're absolutely right. I mean, all of those things could apply to and should apply to the whole company as well, the whole organization. Mm -hmm. It's just when you take it down a level, you sort of think about, I think, more the one-on-one -on -one interactions rather than the team-to-team -team interactions, um, mm -hmm. which is what the way I tend to think about a larger organization, team-to-team -team, rather than one-to-one -one person. My dog agrees. Yeah, I, I don't have stats, but it would be interesting to pull how many middle management and higher are on some kind of meds to handle pressure because there is no safety because it's so cut through right um unfortunately but that's the rules of the game as you go up now do we take that into account as we define a team being a performing team or an org being a performing org right which leads us, hang on, let me screen share on moon. Sorry. What through which lens was it defined for an org to be performing? For a team to be performing? And which lenses should have been taken into account? Does it make sense when I say through which lens? Do we take into account engineers? Do we take account stakeholders, investors? Who do we consider when we came up with the meaning of a performing organization or a performing team? And as you 
reflect on it, who should be considered when coming up with these meanings? Does that make more sense? Okay. Yeah, it does. Let's dive in and see who we kept in the loop and who we did not. And where will it take us next? Dun, dun, dun. Maybe go to the breakout room, please. <clears throat> right now, am I? Yes. <laughs> All right. We're... Athletic performance versus corporate performance. Mm -hmm. So, what do we think of the lens? Who do we include? Who do we welcome and who do we forget? Because we're like, oh, my point of focus is X, Y, Z people. So well, we go ahead. We had an interesting conversation, both about you know which lenses, and we talked about a variety of lenses. You know, uh, employees and customers and the community and the environment and shareholders, and then you know, ooh, internally with employees, is management different, right? But then we got into a really interesting conversation. You know, riffing on the lens idea about well, but where is that lens focusing, right? Near term, long term and how that changes things. So that was kind of an interesting thing that was happening in our group. Nice, I like where you guys went with that. Near term or far term. What are um, kind of expectation of a performing team or Board change? What changes? Yeah. If we're looking near term versus long term, will our defining meaning of a performing team or a performing organization change? I I think it it does. It certainly can. In mm -hmm. my and in my experience, it kind of loops back to your topic of sustainability, which because there are things that you can do in the short term mm -hmm. that can mm -hmm. make short term performance look good. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that ultimately you're not going to be able to sustain that for, you know, meaningful time periods. And, mm -hmm. and we also explored how, and maybe this ties into the conversation we we're having when we all came back from the breakouts, how company perform, like performing for investors is actually only loosely coupled to the things we might think of as company performance, right? Do we have happy customers? Are we profitable? All of that. Like mm -hmm. there's there's a pretty loose coupling between that and like what's our what's our share price doing? Mm -hmm. and, and the things that might make investors excited, like, oh, we just did a round of layoffs. Look at how much <laughs> we're cutting costs might drive stock price, but isn't really going to drive. Mm -hmm our ability as a company to satisfy more and more customers and you know sustainably continue to be profitable. So, so those are some of the things we kind of explored. Mm -hmm. Nice, thanks for sharing. Sustainability to well, maintain towards, that performance. Towards the end, of, we had a lot of those same kind of conversations, but something occurred to me towards the end of the conversation, which is that especially when with promotion and when it happens with engineers going into management and then looking through the engineering lens and then suddenly they have to look through uh, like a people management uh, and uh, budgeting and planning lens. Um, and um, that is really apparent there. Um, not every, you know, and how, not they there's many companies promote within that way and uh, 
but changing and getting your hands out of the dirt <laughs> and having to do more soft skills is also, you know, a way to um, understand which lens you need to put, look through. Because the skill changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where should we focus then? Growing a manager, growing a company, growing the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Puff, big puzzles. Puff, big puzzles. So we our talked about, oh, go ahead. Okay. So, um, our team was debating um, whether everyone should have an equal voice or even a voice in, you know, what makes the team performing and or the organization performing. Or, or even have their voice heard. We were talking about the janitor versus the CEO, right? How much of a weight should each voice have? And how to form? There is a, I, I forget which class I took, but there was a story shared about a janitor in a doctor's office. Anybody familiar with it? So we go something like this, and uh, it's been a while, but totally triggers on what you're talking about. The, um, some exec needs to go see a heart doctor and has a hard time going in, finally gets on a fancy flight, goes over to a different state to get into a doctor's office, has to sit there the whole time. Meanwhile, he sees the janitor get in and scrub the waiting room, and he says, man, you're so into this cleaning. What's your drive? And the janitor says, we fix hearts here. The doctor fixes mm -hmm. them and we keep them healthy. Mm -hmm. But it takes a lot to get that motivation and that drive. But it's always good. We fix hearts here. Everybody has a mission for the same thing from a different angle. Whose voice? Mm -hmm. Great conversations. Employee, community, environment, the voice, mm -hmm. the quiet voices. They have a <laughs> lot to say. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to share anything? Well, nobody touched on the sports and we had that conversation in our group, so I'll just stick it in there what uh, <laughs> what we uh, got to talk about. In the world of sports, right, performance, what is performance? Performance is that you're delivering results and you deliver them consistently. If you are a top performer, you're a top athlete, you're known for being able to win, you know, consistently. And so we were like, Musing on that consistency and you know how is it like for some you know their top performing team teams for example like Warriors or uh, some uh, uh, soccer teams where um, you know there is not just the one top performer but several and they can get sidelines and and injured and whatever and then team somehow need to regroup refocus refine something and you know drive to win that is a consistent result and that is a performance so that's what was happening in our um room i'll just add it to the to the pile thank you yeah in sports the vision to win is so strong i would wonder how many people see the vision to win in their orgs and their in their teams as the lens get turned on well yeah. i think it's a, it's actually uh a, a, how many people see that that is a good question because when you go to a startup and you work with the startup everyone in the startup wants to win mm -hmm. and they would work hard and they would work long and they would overcome this and that because there's always this desire to win and they, you know, dream and believe in it. And then when you go to a corporation, people go like, I come here for salary. 
not to win. And that creates very really different uh, results and they're performing as well. And, you know, they have uh, some advantages to uh, over, uh, over the startups as, you know, longevity and whatever, but those are like two different um, uh, bunches of people, you know, and they motivated by different things. So Sustainable. Perhaps, yeah. performance sustainable paycheck and I, I, you know there's some variation in the immediacy of my of my performance if i'm on a seven person whatever team mm -hmm. if i have a bad day that's going to be very obvious if okay. i show up in my corporate job as one of 20,000 and I have a bad day, nobody notices. Because mm -hmm. with sport teams, if we're talking about the pro level, right, you only get one shot, so to say. And the, and the feedback is immediate. <laughs> the feedback loop is pretty immediate. <laughs> yeah, you don't get on the field. Well, I have a question though on sport. Is the goal to win or is the goal to make money? Well, you make money by winning. So it's not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah, not necessarily. Anyone mm -hmm. who's a Chicago Bears fan can be yeah. about that. <laughs> so I, I think I think we have to look at sport through a different lens too, especially now with free agents and uh, and you know the way the teams move around so much, is it more about just, you know, a performance, period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not necessarily winning. But you gotta jive with the team. And if it's a team sport versus individual, it's gonna be. Mm -hmm. Right. And of course, I mean, you know, that famous, that famous thing about, the NFL is not about scoring points. The NFL is a media company. They're selling advertising. Mm -hmm. That's the business. And the, the athletes are just the means that get them there. Which mm -hmm. also kind of circles back to Lena's thing about, wow, what, at what level is your perspective, right? Because if you zoom in, Mm -hmm. You zoom into like, what is a high performing athlete, right? Oh, someone who can run fast and throw the ball and catch the ball and do all these mm -hmm. things. But you can have a high performing athlete and not have a winning team. Yeah. So you might say that they're, they're not a high performing team, right? So the team isn't doing well, but maybe an individual is. But then, yeah, as you start to zoom back out, it's like, oh, but the organization of the sports team, are they profitable? Oh, mm -hmm. very profitable. Yeah. Right. And then, yeah, zoom out to like the league and it's like, oh, all about are we selling advertising? It's like, yeah, where where are you sitting when you're looking and judging performance gets really interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No easy. Wait. Just well. <laughs> Lots of lenses there. Yeah. Yeah, Chris. Lots of, lenses, <laughs> lots of views. So let me let me share a little something that I have put together as a reflection of behavior organization, agile, and teams, and so forth. What? So performing organization, there's lots of things to look at, right? We know that economics are a big, big driver, whether it's for profitability, for stock price to go up. But we also know that there are systems in place and how fluid does it go? And of course, we can't forget that there are people. So it starts with a human and it starts with a human and the people started working in organizations, companies a long, long time 
But it wasn't until 1970s that an AT&T company that I'm guessing all of you know, did a study and realized, holy moly, we have people working and it's not just go and do, right? So we got to look at the science and see what does it tell us over time? What can we learn? What can we extract? And when we talk about goals, how fast can you go? How slow do you go? I am um, a big fan of Mary Poppins and every job that has that must be done, there must be an element of fun. So fun is a really important thing, right? If you can't squeeze in like a 15 minute happy hour or even an hour of activity, depending on if you're in person or not, or people can do a Rochambeau game and giggle and whatnot, probably going too fast and it's not sustainable, okay? Now, when we have these three pieces in the middle, then we can zoom out and we can look at productivity. And productivity, whether you're at the top or with the boots on the ground team, it's driven by your everyday actions, right? What's your system? Does it fluidly go? Or does it have bumps that get in the way? Because then we can enable autonomy, which is actions by empowered employees. And one of the ways that we do this is by not holding on to the knowledge, but by sharing and being transparent, because then we can make decisions easier without having to knock on five other people's doors and say, hey, what do you think? Can I get your opinion? Can you tell me about your specialty over here, right? The transparency, the autonomy, the ability to do it and keep going, right? We also got to look at return on investment because it matters. I mean, let's be real. Who's not working for money? Sure, there are a lot of people, but there's also a lot of people that are. There's a lot of companies that want to do good, but they can't do good without making that money. So we got to consider, do we only look at profits? Do we look at what we're saving? Or also looking at our, what are we producing? What's produced? And what's produced is not only our product, but it's also how are we growing the people? We could look at the return on investment by investing in our people. We already know there are people that are in these organizations. Let's recognize them. And if we recognize that it's people and we're growing them, then we can talk about work-life balance and we can talk about sustainable performance. You can't go 100 miles an hour 100% of the time. Now, depending on what your team structure is, if you have new college grads, sure, they're going to be super ambitious. But then there's the opposite spectrum. Hey, I'm about to retire. You got to slow down. So finding that sustainable performance will be important. And in order to do that, we got to define what performance means in the first place. You got to know your story. And if you know your story, you can then make the words and the sentences and the chapters that follow. So based on all the learnings, taking on transparency of Agile, taking on inspection and adaption of Agile, this is the recommendation. Consider this to have a performing organization. You can have your economics piece, you can have the system, what we do day in, day out, but you also have the people ability with what it takes for them. What do you think? I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, so today, actually, a little later in the day, I'm gonna meet my super boss. 
this is the first time i'm going to meet meet with her and um, she is responsible for a very large uh, portfolio very large kinds of business in the organization mm-hmm. okay i'm little nervous on how this meeting is going to be but um, uh, trying to apply this framework uh, the performing organization that is something like she will be very much interested in making her group uh, perform better right mm-hmm. um so in order for me to show value which is the individual part uh, not as a team player but as an individual mm-hmm. i may have to show how i am valuable to her right in mm-hmm. in terms of um, in various parameters but then if i don't show the value to her she may not show interest in having the conversation with me or mm-hmm. over a period of time right um, so there is individual component mm-hmm. and there is an organization benefit Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's a mixed mix of that um mm-hmm. if i take if i just purely focus on work life balance it mm-hmm. may not be it may not be a right conversation mm-hmm. to have mm-hmm. uh, you know or if i um talk about fun it may mm-hmm. not be that so who is to take care of the responsibility of work life balance fun um, and or the human part of it how those things will come into play uh, at a large organization. Yeah, and that comes down to what are your values? What is important? Some companies flat out say we don't care for this. And then you got to make a judgment call, is that organization for you? Now, it could be a scrum master, it could be a coach, it could be a sponsor you find that says, "Hey, we're going to do at least one thing a month." or with the balance that you block off time and you only see you can only do calls from this time to this time right it comes down to defining balance like i'll i'll be honest i interviewed with one company and they're like if you want to have family dinner you need to block it out on your calendar i'm like what right that that was a good mix the actions what we do every day will guide the balance now if we're push 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 there's not going to be that balance and it's a collective responsibility it's not just one person were you interviewing with Elon Musk <laughs> don't know <laughs> <laughs> but there's plenty of uh, companies that take on that right if we look at sports right like one mile run for example until what is it 54 it was believed you cannot run a mile under 5 minutes and then the minute one person broke it it was only a matter of time before hundreds of people broke in that record and ran that fast so we look at modeling and then repeat because we think that's okay that's acceptable right it's back to those everyday actions and we take responsibility for what we allow to happen and what we model another t- tricky quadrant this is a- autonomy idea mm-hmm. um i mean you know when you have 10,000 people working on projects and results you create a fair amount of interdependence and dependence where i'm you know i'm dependent on sales and marketing sales is dependent on marketing and marketing is dependent on product and product is dependent on engineering and and so there are all these dependencies that sort of you know challenge how autonomous i am in my own decision making um depending on the stakeholders of my work product right but we can also enable it to where you don't have to go talk up the chain down the chain mm-hmm. before you start talking you could empower employees to just go directly one on one instead of right that's an autonomy 
it depends on what we define, right? And so therefore it's not set in stone and this is it and the only thing, but it's food for thought to consider as breaking out. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at this, would you change something about performing org or performing team? Taking this into account. Can you ask the question again? Would, are you asking about our teams or any team or? So beginning of the call, mm -hmm. ah, we took a dive into what does it mean for an org to perform? What does it mean for a team to perform? The piece that's missing here is the stakeholders that are not inside the organization, that are not employees. Mm -hmm. The community, the neighbors, mm -hmm. the rivers. <laughs> Yeah. The lens is only so big. We'll put a bad line. <laughs> Grab a bigger wider lens. Capture the feet. With the everyday actions, there's volume to be said to the messages that people receive. The messages you said? Mm -hmm. There are some individuals who say one thing, but do another. They could say they're all for environment. They're all for sustainability, whether it's human or the planet, but then they do otherwise. That speaks well, volume. It speaks volumes and um, people like that. I mean, that's a performance issue, a personal performance issue, mm -hmm. if it's part of their job. Mm -hmm. But it ripples and then affects the performance of others. Mm -hmm. Right. It could get contagious or you can have a turnover as a result. But I, I think also what we need to add here that, you know, there is, uh, there are people who have benefited from that kind of performative stance. Uh -huh. <laughs> there are people who are able to sell themselves and to navigate spaces that leads them to promotion by being performative. Uh -huh. and, and that's just kind of based on the system. And within mm -hmm. that system, they're considered a high performer, mm -hmm. even though other people <laughs> may not think they're a high performer. Mm -hmm. But that's what they're titled based on the lens. Yeah, they get elected level. to Congress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's tough, right? It's really hard if you're not in the mm -hmm. in club. If you're in the out group, you're like swimming against the current. Right? I guess then my kind of question then based on in terms of this lens of what a performing organization is, is it a li little bit of a kind of an ideal? And it's a great ideal and it's something that we'd always kind of like and, and hope that it could, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. kind of move towards that. Mm -hmm. But what happens when, you know, just the definition of performance and that lens of performance doesn't correlate to this? Isn't it still a performing organization? Mm -hmm. It is based on that definition, based on that meaning, right? And the same thing with an athlete. For one person to put on sneakers, that's already like, sweet, I'm an athlete. 
for another person, I'm not an athlete until I'm at a very high level. And the percentage of going pro, it's very, very tiny. So who's what, an athlete? One thing, so one thing I see here that um, I think we, may, we might be dancing around a little bit is there's no governance in here. And I think that's where, I mean, people love all this, but they do want governance. They want guidelines. They want rules of the game. Mm -hmm. that seems i had the same thought and it seems to be a little baked in in the combination of productivity and autonomy mm, okay. autonomy is a version of governance um but i mean obviously as we said uh, there are different levels what does autonomy mean at which mm -hmm. level in the organization yeah if you have a company of three, it's going to be very different. A company of a hundred, and it's going to be even more different if you scale it up to a thousand or more. And then it goes to understanding what's sustainable, what's realistic mm -hmm. at that level. Mm -hmm. reminds me that one way of articulating the concerns of, of leadership uh, are people, processes, and results. And processes mm -hmm. in, this, in this case is roles, responsibilities, governance, that's all sort of baked mm -hmm. into, into the, the process idea. You know, at the end, there's so many different models. There's so many different frameworks. Just a matter of finding what sticks and works and gets you moving, right? If running is not your thing, there's yoga. If yoga is not your thing, there's TRX and something else in between. Just an example, <laughs> right? But it starts with the conversation and understanding and motivation. There's a desire to change. There's a desire to shift. Any other questions, comments? Well, I was thinking back to the governance um, idea and everything, and also um, putting in rules of the game actually can increase productivity. And so I think it's a, like you said, it's a really important part of productivity. In, you know, meaning, you know, a um, simple example is, uh, you know, you can, if they said, you know, a style guide. A what? For, for coding, a style guide for coding, oh. you know. Yeah, <laughs> an, an example of that type of governance, you know. Everybody could look at the code, it's written the same, you know, you know how you're supposed to write it. So, yeah, that's part of productivity, you're totally right, Volker. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I just seen uh, a reference from Chris too long now. Yeah, I forgot about that organization. Very interesting. Thinking far. How far out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I have to read uh, it now, Chris. <laughs> thank you, Liana. Thank you so much. It was awesome. Well, you guys might be thinking of a uh, few last questions. I would um, stop recording.